working. We need more and more airlines to embark on their sustainability journey. We need more and more corporate customers to uh, reach agreement with airlines to buy SAF and reduce their CO2 footprint. Every shipment in the sky carries more than just cargo. It carries the weight of responsibility. And in the race to decarbonize aviation, it's no longer just about the aircraft or the fuel. It's about the partnerships behind them. Because when fuel producers, freight forwarders, airlines, governments, airports, and shippers work together, sustainable change becomes scalable. From long-term SAF agreements to book and claim innovation, collaboration is proving to be the most powerful tool for a cleaner future. To explore how partnerships are actually reshaping the air cargo industry from Mercedes-Benz and D.B. Schenker's record-breaking SAF deal to Amazon and Neste, Cargolux, Microsoft and AIT and South America's first book and claim milestone, we welcome you to the eighth episode of Future of Transport, Innovative and Sustainable, an air cargo sustainability series delivered to you by Edmonton International Airport, YEG. At Edmonton International Airport, YEG, we can handle any size of operation, including oversized, heavyweight, and industrial cargo within the Port Alberta Foreign Trade Zone. Our IATA CEIV Pharma community has expertise handling all multi-temperature controlled shipments, including pharmaceuticals, perishable products, advanced agricultural, and high-value added products. Access Canada, the US, and Mexico through a multimodal transportation hub that includes major highways and proximity to two national rail lines. This makes YEG a key hub between Asian and North American markets. Sustainability drives every aspect of our cargo business and on-airport ecosystems, making Edmonton International Airport your best choice for investment to move our industry forward to a net zero future. Visit flyeia.com slash cargo. We joined the Net Zero Challenge by the Government of Canada in 2022, and we're now a proud bronze participant of this challenge. Uh, basically, that's entitled us to develop a roadmap on our decarbonization and what are our options to reach out uh, Net Zero by 2050. That type of partnership with the government help us um, navigating that um, challenging journey on what are the options out there to reach net zero. And for us as an airport, that's important that we engage with governments as well as academia, for example, to explore what are the clean technology that are available, but also, you know, scientist uh, data uh, and climate risk and opportunity for airports to, uh, you know, take uh, ownership on our own uh, net zero journey. Earlier this year, Edmonton International Airport, Canada's largest by land size, joined the H2 Can Fly Consortium to help shape the future of hydrogen-powered aviation. We're a proud member of H2 Can Fly, which is a pan-Canadian consortium since June 2025. We actually announced that partnership at the Paris Air Show. And this uh, partnership aimed to accelerate uh, infrastructure development as well as aircraft technology development to make it happen. That makes special sense for us here in Edmonton in Alberta because 60% of Canadian hydrogen production is produced in the Edmonton metro region. And so that makes a lot of sense for us to pilot, to test, to be uh, a test bed for that type of technology. And so we're very proud to be part of that partnership with big organizations or large organizations such as Airbus, uh, CAE, the National Research Council of Canada, and that will, we hope, uh, advance the hydrogen application for aviation uh, over the next uh, 20 or 25 years. But there is so much more happening at YG. The airport is taking hydrogen adoption to new heights by partnering with diesel tech industries to explore the integration of the Guardian Hydrogen Diesel System on two of its heavy-duty runway snow sweepers. So in addition of the existing light-duty fleet that we have running on hydrogen, 
We recently announced a partnership with Diazel Tech uh, Industry, a local partner here in Alberta, uh, to retrofit two of our runway snow sweepers with a Guardian uh, hydrogen diesel system uh, that can have, uh, you know, hydrogen and diesel. We're super excited to uh, see the first uh, runway snow sweeper ready, hopefully for the winter season uh, later this year. YG will be Canada's first airport to explore the adoption of DTI's innovative hydrogen and diesel technology in its runway snow sweepers, vehicles considered from a hard to abate fleet. The airport also uses its growing fleet of hydrogen-powered passenger vehicles in its day-to-day -day ground operations. A mobile hydrogen refueler is located right at the airport and supports refueling the fleet which includes Toyota Mirai. YG's efforts mirror global trends. Airports from Singapore to Brussels are trialing hydrogen ground equipment to cut emissions. And beyond energy, YG recently launched Ship Alberta, a digital platform helping small businesses access better shipping rates and connect to global markets, proving innovation at airports isn't just about planes. Still wondering why partnerships are important to build a greener aviation future? Partnerships are extremely important in general for air cargo, but especially in sustainability. So we at Finnair Cargo are partnering with several partners. But one thing as well in partnerships as well is the collaboration with our forwarders, our main customers as well that we discuss with them what is the shortest route, but as well, how can we avoid last minute cancellations as well. So the fuller a plane is, the less uh, uh, we are wasting any fuel, but as well, that makes it much more sustainable. And last but not least, of course, sustainable aviation fuel SAF plays a huge role. So we are partnering there with different kind of fuel providers as well, do educational seminars, but as well discuss with our partners in order to make sure that it's a partnership and that all of this can only be done as a team sport. But partnerships to accelerate aviation sustainability are not just limited to airports and airlines. In fact, everyone from airlines, airports, fuel companies, shippers, and even IT companies are playing a huge role in making flying more sustainable. But how? So, recently, Avianca Cargo, the Queen Flowers, and Repsol have completed South America's first sustainable aviation fuel book and claim operation using the RSB framework. The initiative covers SAF-linked CO2 reduction certificates equivalent to over 6,000 gallons of fuel, enough to power a Bogota, Miami cargo flight carrying over 60 tons of flowers. By using the book and claim model, they can support decarbonization without needing physical SAF on site, making sustainable aviation more scalable and accessible. Manage through the Roundtable on Sustainable Biomaterials RSB for traceability, the project allows Avianca Cargo to offset Scope 1 emissions while enabling customers to reduce Scope 3 emissions in the supply chains. Moreover, SAF can reduce life cycle CO2 emissions by up to 80%, and IATA estimates that it could contribute over 65% of the reductions needed for aviation to achieve net zero by 2050. But achieving sustainability is not just one person's game. It has to be a shared responsibility. Uh, a global collaboration is essential to drive the right solutions to the market because aviation is a global market. And I think those kind of collaborations and IARA is one of the stakeholders for this. It's essential to provide uh, the right framework, the right baseline for companies such as the Salem Renewables to drive solutions to that sector. Similarly, Avia Solutions Group, the world's one of the largest ACMI producers, has partnered with DHL Express to cut greenhouse gas emissions through the use of SAP via DHL's Go Green Plus service. Between January and April 2025, the partnership helped reduce emissions by 12.61% or 30.6 tons. The collaboration spans 
several aviation subsidiaries and reflects a broader push for sustainable aviation practices. DHL's Go Green Plus enables companies to cut scope 3 emissions using a book and claim model. This initiative supports DHL Group's goal of net zero emissions by 2050 and is backed by major SAF deals with BP and Neste aiming to cut 2 million tons of CO2 emissions. In our decarbonization roadmap, sustainable fuels actually play the biggest role. That is simply because aviation is the biggest lever and the second biggest is heavy duty trucking. So in both sustainable fuels, drop in fuels play a majority, a very important role. In the DHL group, two thirds of our footprint stems actually from aviation. First question was, is there stuff available? And with Neste, you can demonstrate that it is. And the second aspect is we do have global operations and we do need a partner that can help us to deliver stuff globally. And therefore, we entered into a partnership very early on. And that was one of the first strategic suppliers that we had for our sustainable aviation fuel. SAF producing company Neste has also signed an agreement to supply Amazon Air with 7,500 tons of Neste My Sustainable Aviation Fuel through the end of 2025 for use at San Francisco International Airport and Ontario International Airport in California. Amazon becomes the first company to use SAF at Ontario Airport, one of the top 10 cargo hubs in the US. The deal supports Amazon's goal to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2040 and builds on a partnership with Neste that began in 2021. We see ourselves as an enabler and a partner for logistics companies to really reduce their emissions. With our uh, renewable fuel, so uh, renewable diesel and SAF, we can really help companies significantly reduce their emissions. It is clear that though SAF is significantly more expensive than conventional fuel, it is a critical step in sustainable logistics. Moreover, as announced in April this year, Neste began producing SAF at its Rotterdam refinery with an annual capacity of 500,000 tons. This raises Neste's global SAF production capability to 1.5 million tons. A major expansion underway will make Rotterdam the world's largest renewable fuel facility, increasing Neste's SAF output to 2.2 million tons by 2027. Recently, D.B. Schenker and Mercedes-Benz have signed their largest ever sustainable aviation fuel deal covering 13,000 tons to cut 40,000 tons of CO2 emissions from an air freight between Frankfurt, Beijing and Shanghai. This initiative, part of Mercedes-Benz's Ambition 2039 strategy, uses a virtual allocation system to track verified emission reduction under scope 3 accounting. This milestone highlights how shippers are now driving sustainability in aviation alongside logistics leaders, airlines and airports, mirrored by similar efforts like Cargo Lux's collaboration with AIT Worldwide Logistics and Microsoft. Cargo Lux, AIT Worldwide Logistics and Microsoft have entered a three-year sustainable aviation fuel partnership to support Microsoft Cloud Logistics, cutting an estimated 66,000 tons of CO2 emissions. The SAF derived from used cooking oil and tallow and produced by Valerius Diamond Green Diesel is blended into Carvalux's fuel supply at Houston Airport and tracked via RSB registry under EU Corsia standards. The collaboration underscores how joint industry efforts can accelerate SAF adoption and advance decarbonization across global air cargo supply chains. Well, obviously, we are I'm very pleased with the agreement that we um, did with AIT uh, and um, on behalf of Microsoft. I think it's the biggest deal we've done to date. The major factor, as far as I'm concerned, in terms of uh, the use of SAP is really dependent on the manufacturer or the shipper at the end of the day. Because folders are not prepared to pay for voluntary SAP. Uh, 
Um, but the shippers, at the end of the day, that's their choice um, that they're going to have to take. And uh, uh, from the EU perspective, uh, we have a target of getting to net zero by 2050. Is it going to happen? Uh, at this point in time, there's still a lot of uh, SAF manufacturing. At this stage, the dependency is on first generation SAF mainly. The second generation SAF being produced, but not in any great quantities. And I think the challenge for the future and for the, um, for the shippers to reduce their carbon footprint even more efficiently is really to optimize uh, and accelerate the development of second and third generation uh, sustainable aviation fuels. But that takes a lot of, uh, I mean, everybody talks about synthetic fuels uh, using um, CO2, hydrogen, whatever, but it also takes a lot of electricity, of which itself is an issue at the end of the day. So uh, I see Microsoft Google investing into restarting nuclear power plants. And for me, I think nuclear is an important component of uh, the future in terms of power generation to enable the production of SAF. While nuclear energy is the ultimate way forward to generate energy, the immediate option could be to bring in new players, enable more collaboration and develop new technologies to produce SAF more sustainably. Why? There's really two big challenges, uh, limited availability and the cost of the fuel. And uh, in the industry, we can't expect airlines just to absorb this cost. And uh, at the same time, we can't expect consumers to pay an unlimited amount more to decarbonize. So we have to find a way to make these fuels abundant and the cost reasonable enough that it's a uh, economical way to decarbonize. And so that's really what our technology is all about. And we've found tremendous support from the airline industry, um, helping companies like ours uh, support fundraising, getting projects developed, because they know that technology innovation like this is really how we're gonna solve the problem. Um, and actually, we're happy to say that one of our um, strategic investors is JetBlue, and we announced an MOU on offtake uh, this week. Um, so those are key relationships that companies like ours need to build. So, it's clear that SAF is an important element at this stage, but we need more associations, combined efforts, more assessments, more feedback from the community and conscious decision making to pace towards a green future. Yeah, so we have one person which is dedicated to only working on sustainability. She, she's our green, uh, let's say, conscience. One of the things we did, uh, Tiaga has a blue sky self assessment or blue sky assessment. And we said, normally it's for individual companies. And we said, let's partner with Tiaga to make sure we have a community assessment. So there were several of our members who did the assessment at the same time. They get their individual feedback of what they can do better. But we also get a community feedback on the, how we can improve as a community, because that's where our added value is. Some things they can solve individually, but some things there you need a group approach. And that's where we're going to take, when we get the assessment, that's what we're going to take and work on. Right. We need to assess our efforts and take constant feedback to improve our sustainability efforts. While the future is still unknown, we shouldn't stop innovating or implementing ways to make aviation more sustainable, be it by increasing the use of SAP, exploring hydrogen fuel cell aeroplanes or moving towards waste-free sustainable packaging methods. To know more about industry initiatives around green aviation, stay tuned with us and keep watching the series Future of Transport, Innovative and Sustainable, an Air Cargo Sustainability Series delivered to you by Edmonton International Airport, YG.